Hi, my name is Jeremy Hayward, Account Manager with uh, WL Alfalfa. I want to go with, through a few things with you today is, uh, on the product uh, update, go through the lineup a little bit, and uh, talk about uh, uh, the product focus going forward with the Cisco companies. Uh, looking at our lineup today, uh, mainly five products in the lineup, uh, 326, a grazer. Uh, it's been around a little bit. Uh, primarily we want to focus on 343, 353, and 363. Two HQ varieties and one uh, uh, leaf hopper resistant type. The 348 is a uh, Phantomyces Race 2 resistant product. Uh, we'll talk about it a little bit later. But uh, primarily want to talk about the big three. Again, WL343HQ, WL353LH that carries the new hopper shield logo and WL363HQ. 343, a brief discussion on it as we get started here. Uh, really a proven forage quality leader. If uh, you were looking for a product in a fall dormant four for a grower that uh, uh, puts a lot of emphasis on his uh, forage nutrition, uh, this is that variety. And it, have, it uh, comes with the uh, WL yield package that, uh, that the growers expect. So again, a very reliable forage quality product. Uh, performs very well under a three to five cup management system. Again, it is a fall dormancy four, strong winter hardiness, and great disease package. Uh, it does carry the HQ uh, designation, which is not something that we uh, just place on a variety. Uh, the HQ designation is important uh, because it uh, lets growers know that uh, if they're forced to, uh, to not cut on time, it provides some harvest flexibility. Let's say if we're making a cutting at 10th bloom, uh, intended, instead we, uh, we have to go to 50% bloom. These varieties do a good job of really holding forage quality, holding those fiber levels down, those group protein levels up. So uh, with a 343, a fall dormant 4 has good quick recovery. Uh, it really does a good job of complementing two of the newest varieties in our lineup, a 353 and 363. One thing that you always hear about 343 that uh, is outstanding is uh, just seedling bigger, as you can see here in this picture. It really does a good job coming out of the gate. Uh, so a good agronomic trait there. 353 is, uh, is our new product and really is the new standard in leaf hopper resistance. Uh, 353 does carry the new hopper shield logo. It's the only uh, seventh generation leaf hopper resistant product on the marketplace today. It has the highest level of resistance at 86%. So uh, for the growers that uh, you know, are not wanting to spray, uh, they don't typically scout for potato leaf hopper. This is truly a, a no spray uh, leaf hopper resistant alfalfa. It does carry a perfect 30 30 on um, disease resistance index, has great recovery in a fall dormant four. This is kind of something similar that you would see. This is actually East Iowa under some moderate leaf hopper pressure. So you can see an obvious yield and, and certainly a color difference uh, with the 353 versus uh, a conventional alfalfa that does not have resistance. Um, so this is pretty common that what we would see under moderate leaf hopper pressure in Indiana and surrounding states. And this is where we get that nice expression. We get that nice uh, profile of granular hairs, both on the underside of the leaf and all the way up the stem. Uh, so this number really expresses those glandular hairs uh, to a level where the potato leaf hopper does not want to be in fields uh, 353, would rather go to another host species. This is typically uh, this is typical to what we see. There wasn't a whole lot of leaf uh, hopper pressure at these Iowa State trials in Ames, but you can see even under moderate pressure the kind of differences that you see here in yield up to uh, three quarter a ton difference between the WL353 and its next the next pioneer. Uh, the, uh, the 6426, the Golden Harvest product, uh, leaf hopper products, you can see the difference uh, that the uh, hopper shell carries. Uh, we see the same thing in Boone on uh, west of Ames in 07, a year where they did have quite a bit of pressure. So the sixth generation 345, that was about four and a half ton yield. Going from the sixth generation to now the seventh generation 353, you can tell the, the big difference in yield there. So going on to 363, uh, it's, it's really as far as yield and quality goes, it, it is our highest yielding HQ in our lineup. Uh, replaced 357 HQ, which is very popular in the Midwest. It is a new 5.2, uh, again, fall dormancy 5, spectacular winter hardiness of 1.7, which is not common uh, in fall dormant 
five uh, alfalfas, but one thing that you will always hear with growers is this is this is for the grower that is really pushing the bar on production and quality. The thing that you will always hear back from growers is that quickly uh, a fall dormant five like 363 recovers, uh, which is very important, uh, especially whenever we're dealing with a lot of these uh, summer annual weeds and, and grasses. We get that quick canopy coverage. Uh, great disease profile. Again, it uh, fine stem, very palatable, carries the HQ designation as well, so it, it has met some key parameters as far as holding for its quality if we're delayed in harvest. And this is the kind of thing that you see uh, with 363 compared here to the right side with the Hybris Force 400, uh, just that quick recovery. This is, this is actually after second cutting, you see that quick canopy coverage see no soil in between the rows there, which you do with the fall dormant floor from Hyberforce. So again, just to wrap up, as far as placement goes with the 343, uh, this is really for the growers that are looking to really maximize quality, uh, but uh, doesn't want to sell themselves uh, short on yield. 343 is a great choice. We probably undersell this variety just a bit. 353 has great uh, quality as well, just because it carries a leaf hopper designation. Uh, it's great for its quality product, solid, solid yielder. Um, but again, it's for growers that are not typically applying an insecticide uh, for potato leaf hopper and uh, are, are wanting something that's truly a no spray. 363 is for the grower that's really pushing the bar, pushing out uh, five cuts. Um, uh, you know, is one something that's going to come out of the gate very quick in the spring, go to dormant, go dormant later on in the uh, in the fall pack a lot of yield in between. 363 would be that grower's uh, variety. The other two that are that are out there that are not quite as, uh, we don't move as quite as many of them, is the uh, the Grazer, the 326GZ, uh, still very popular, been around a lot of years, or the 348, which carries the Ophinomyces uh, root rot, uh, race to resistance. Uh, going forward in the future, though we will have 343HQ and 348AP in the lineup for 2011. Uh, We'll also be introducing 354 HQ, um, which uh, uh, with the Aphanomyces race 2 problem that's that's uh, prevalent throughout the Midwest, it's really geared for our toughest soils, our most poorly drained soils. Uh, we can carry the Aphanomyces root rot disease, both race 1 and race 2. 348 has high resistance to race 2, as, as it does race, uh, race 1. Uh, 354 will carry a higher level of resistance and will have quality uh, that will rival 343, which it is also replacing. So we're kind of taking two varieties out and putting in uh, one variety for those areas, again, most heavily poorly drained soils. Again, a solid fall dormant floor with great uh, uh, great yield and quality, uh, but does carry that highest after resistance available in the marketplace today, and a 35-35 uh, disease. So, uh, you also see a solid winter hardiness package with this one as well. Just kind of a few uh, in-house trials here. Don't have it in a lot of the public university trials uh, as of yet. But you can see as far as uh, how it performed against the, the average varieties in uh, Nampa, Idaho, and New York, a couple locations in Wisconsin, more than held its own as far as production goes. As far as quality, uh, like I said, just does a good job of rivaling a variety like 343 solid milk per acres against some varieties that are uh, that are known uh, for some uh, some decent quality numbers so that's a that's a wrap as far as the product lineup uh, appreciate uh, you selling the WL lineup and uh, I'm sure your, uh, your growers do too thanks again thanks Jeremy now uh, let's let's uh you know, I'm sure a lot of the alfalfa people might, uh, we don't need to get into it too deep, but uh, the Roundup Ready situation is uh, is in the court system right now and everything. So basically, if they're looking for the latest update on Roundup Ready, I suggest they talk with their Cisco sales rep or stop by the booth and talk with you on that. That's correct. That would be uh, that would be the best thing to do. Um, this is, uh, we're, we're having this talk here in August. Uh, you know, things could change here in a couple weeks. Uh, bottom line is uh, it's 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 very good. We the the injunction was lifted by the Supreme Court, um, but we still have to. Uh, the USDA still needs to deregulate the product, complete the IS, uh, deregulate the product before we are back to selling around the birdie alfalfa again. So uh, that'd be totally fine for folks to come by the booth um, and, and chat about that. We can chat about uh, 
some varieties that uh, the three varieties that, that Cisco the Cisco companies will have uh, for sale hopefully when we get back online in spring. Sounds very good. Thank you very much, Jeremy. Thank you, sir.